only have one more eye question. When you were in Augusta, was that at a golf thing when you were watching the basketball Oh, no, I was at the Peach Jam. Uh, high school basketball tournament. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just, I to yeah. Nah, I, I wish I could have. I'd love to go to that course. I've never had um a chance or the time to go down there. But no, I was I was with my family. My my kids play ball, man. So I was down there with my son. Um. Work that in or... Nah, I mean, it was, you know, typical son's training camp practice, a lot of competition drills today. Um, we put a lot of emphasis on breaking down um, our defense a bit. Um, Pop taught me a long time, or taught all of us a long time ago about whole part whole. You just throw a bunch at them to start um, as far as concepts and environments and schemes almost to the point of overwhelming and then break it down into parts as you go along and then bring it back together. And um, I, I remember the stress of dealing with that in that program because it was like, man, it was a lot. You know, I was only two years out of college and you're sitting there trying to figure out like all the vocabulary and different languages and then the concepts. And then they start to break it down in pieces and you're like, ah, that's what that was. And then you bring it back together again from a whole perspective that today was a part day. We broke all of our defenses down into parts to try to give guys uh, a chance to understand what we're talking about. The, the guys who've been here, they picked it up pretty quickly, but the guys who haven't been here, they were, they're trying to figure out some things, especially on the backside of our defense. I think it's, it's a um, a tool in the, in the tool belt for us. Um, as I told the guys, like I, I put them in stressful situations on purpose to get the reps. Um, you, we won't use it like 10, 12 times in a row in a, in a normal game. You, you use it strategically, just like we did with our zone the past three years. You know, we'll use it two or three possessions at a time, then get out of it. And for me, the number one thing that a zone does is it breaks rhythm. You know, if a team's running a certain play and you can run zone, you can get them out of that play. And sometimes they forget about it. Uh, sometimes it can slow you down uh, from an offensive perspective. You want to slow the offense down. And so I, I think it's going to be something that we can go to, um, especially with Mikhail's ability to, to just cause so much trouble at the top of it. And uh, Chris and Book on the wings, they're so smart. And then you got D.A. behind you. He just covers up a lot of mistakes. So I think it's going to be something that we can play for long periods in the possession, but I also think it's going to be something that we can show and then match up and, and maybe cause some havoc. Is that one that Patrick provided some input on? Yeah, he's – Toronto, in my opinion, you know, along with Golden State, they, they run it differently. But those two teams have run the 3-2 zone better than anybody. And so when we were fortunate enough to have him – come work with us, we, we brought some of those concepts that we felt like could help us elevate our zone defense. And, and I think we have the athletes and the smarts that can do it. I probably wouldn't make this transition if we had, you know, a team full of first, second, and third year players. You probably wouldn't want to do that. To your point, how important is that head of the state guy in a 3-2 look specifically in Mikel or Torrey or Damien was in there? Yeah, those, two, those three guys give you athleticism, um, they give you a bit of renegade that they can go out there and just cause some havoc and you don't want to harness that at all. But the size is, is a bit different. I've seen teams put, I remember back in the day, uh, Coach Carl would have Kenyon Martin at the top of his zone. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Garnett would be at the top of his zone. Like it was imposing when you come down the floor, you see Kevin Garnett sitting there like, you're like, what is that? You know, I think Mikhail's length and his ability to cover ground can really help us in that environment. I want to ask you about Josh Akoji. He's a player with his jumper that it looks good and it's just been consistently yeah. developing. Over your time in the league, what is the most important thing for a younger player to focus on to when all of the mechanics and everything is yeah. just shot Just trust it. Um, it's been proven that that's 
the one thing that you can improve is your shot. You know, <laughs> there are guys who come into the league and they can't defend. And 10 years later, they still can't defend, you know. <laughs> but most guys come into the league, even if they had a shooting uh, deficit, that's the one thing we know that you can improve. And he's got good mechanics. Um, he's pretty consistent. Now it's the ability to carry over the work to the floor without thinking about it. And that's what the elite guys do. They don't think about it. They just do what they do. When you're trying to build consistency, you have to adopt that mentality. When, when Mikel was talking about Josh, you referred to him sort of as a ball hawk and said instinctually, Mikel is playing defense sometimes and he doesn't see guys with the same instincts, but Josh is one of those yeah. guys. Do you see the same? Thing? Yeah, I do. He's He has a bit of renegade in him, you know. I keep using that word, but that's the only thing that I can say respectfully without <laughs> ending up on one of these deals. He just he he can go for steals but cover ground. Sometimes when a guy goes for a steal, he'll pull himself out of position. You know, you'll go for a steal to gamble, and then you're out of the play. Uh, Josh has that ability, like Mikhail and Tory, where he can go for a steal but keep himself in the play. Um, and when you're you know, that size and you can run 20 miles per hour. Like that's, that, that's a lot. I mean, he's a, he's a big, thick dude, but he can move his body around. He's got really good hands and he just has a knack for staying in front of the ball. So I think his ability to gamble and stay in the play with his attributes can help us. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it. Um, I, you know, I kind of thought I was going to get this question yesterday. I just, Thought like, man, I, I really don't want to be a part of that story. You know what I mean? Um, I've been in the NBA a long time. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. And uh, I just was like, man, so you, if you're in this league long enough, you're going to see some tension. But it's usually like two elbows up, both guys go at it, that kind of thing. So when I saw it, I was like, wow, that's that's a tough situation. I'm glad we don't have to deal with that. Um, but I, I really don't have anything of value to add. No, I, I mean, it's it's one of the biggest topics in the sports world. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I just, I felt bad for both parties. I've been around Draymond. I know um, he's passionate, he's emotional, but he's also a guy that cares, you know? And to see him in that light, I was I was like, man, that's, that's really not who he is. Um, I, I work with him on the Olympic team. And I, that's not, that's not the guy that I know. You know, um, and they have a really good culture there. And, and I I never want to say anything to disrespect that culture because I, I know that's a tough thing to deal with when you when you have that kind of tension in your practice. So I, I felt bad for for both of the guys. I felt bad for their teams because this is the time of the year where you're trying to focus on that right there. You know, the last thing you want is a distraction. You want to miss the next Epic battle, yeah. Practice with that ride. With never did, ride. never, never came to that um, level. Um, there were some some physical situations at times, but it was always, you know, it was always controlled. There was a level of respect, even though things got heated. Um, I was always <laughs> on the short end of the stick. <laughs> I was about two fifteen back then, so I was just trying to stay out of harm's way. Um, but that team was a team that was contending. So everything was focused on basketball. Even when it got heated, it quickly flipped back to competing. And I think that's something that's a that's a skill. When you can, you know, be emotional, but get back to competing. That it's an NBA skill. What I'm looking at in the league now is like so many players are emotional and they can't get out of it. You know, the ability to be Emotional because it's a part of you, but get back to competing, I think is a big time skill. And um, it's something that I, I learned when I came into the league. It's okay to show emotion, but get back to the game. Do you attribute that to nowadays, this generation of kids versus that generation? I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I, I, I'm not qualified to make those kinds of assessments. I just, it's just a different day. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's just different. Um, I think. Unfortunately, when instances like that happen, everybody wants to paint the whole league with that brush. That's that's not the NBA. Most of our guys just want to hoop. Uh, most of, if not all, they just want to play ball, win, and, and make money and take care of their families. And sometimes when you play in a contact sport, 
things can can go a different way, man. I'd, I'd be hypocritical if I sat here and said I'd never, I've never been in uh, a few skirmishes myself. <laughs> it's just part of the game, man. But the ability to bounce back and and get back to competing and team is something that I, I learned over my time as a young player. And I hope that I've been a better example of that as I've gotten older. Thank you, Bobby. Right. Happy birthday, Coach. Yeah, happy birthday, Coach. Yeah.